first thing that comes into your mind when you think of the JP2 Raptors? Oh man. Well, it was uh, it was a chance to go back and take the the scariest dinosaur from the first film and really change it. We made some subtle sculptural changes, and we got to. I mean, the paint job was wildly different. We made. I think it was. In the first film, they were all female, and in the second film, we had the male, so we had the bright, vibrant orange. It was something we really had never done before, and I don't think we've done it much since. It was a ton of labor. Basically, we took the under skull, you know, the core shells that, that all the skins would sit on, and then we dissected those into groups and made shapes that would ride over each other and shift under the skin as the mechanics would move. And we spent like, I mean, a solid month, once the mechanics were done, mounting the shells and then moving them and testing and seeing if the muscles were moving and not crashing into other ones. And it was pretty extraordinary. The mission for the Raptors in Jurassic 2, because Stan always wants to make things better, is to make them better. He was very happy with how we did the hydraulic work on the T-Rex. So he said, can we make that smaller and fit it inside of a Raptor? And so that was our challenge, and off we went. I believe that like the first Jurassic Park uh, dinosaurs were cable controlled, yeah, right. yeah. and um, that makes it very difficult to get that speed because it's all, you know, people pulling on levers, and and then you have a little bit of slop because of the cables. But uh, these being hydraulic gave us all the power and all the uh, speed we needed. Plus, we had tons of different points of motion within the puppet, so it made it completely realistic. The moving armature inside was almost all aluminum with some steel in places because we needed to keep it light so that we can move it fast. We can use less power then and with the accelerometers that we had inside there we have to stop the movement in a nice smooth way as well as get it going. So we had to, that technology in there that helped us out a lot with that. I have a hard time being impressed by any one thing on these Raptors because everybody just uh went above and beyond, I thought. The work that Rich Hogan did on, on the actual mechanisms, the, the neck mechanisms uh, were amazing. I mean, these are incredibly heavy characters, so they have a lot of torque. There's a lot of momentum when they're moving around and the electronics needed to compensate and, and deaccelerate and keep them from wobbling when they came to a hard stop. So even that was amazing, even though you don't really get to see that, but, but you see it in the way it moves. And if, and if it wasn't done right, you'd see a completely different character. Sum it up, uh, one sentence, when you see this footage, what comes in your mind? It, you know, a lot of hard work, all the memory of the, the late nights come flooding back and seeing, seeing a really impressive piece of work come together. On set, when we bring these things out, we'd light them up, you know, we'd just, they'd be sitting there parked still, and then we would just say, boom, and make them go, and the actors or producers would see them, and they would be shocked. It was pretty impressive. We'd scare a lot of little kids, too, which is always fun. Everybody was blown away when they saw these uh, characters on set. And, and when you take that character and you put it somewhere in a, an environment that just finishes selling the illusion, it's just, there's nothing telling you that that is not a real creature. It was a lot of hard work, but, uh, but it always paid off.